today to witness my debut as a wedding officiant. <laughs> For those of you who don't know me, you ought to. But in all seriousness, though, we are gathered here today for the vow renewal of Matt and Jenna. Thank you for coming and joining these two as they recommit to each other, renew their vows, and retie the knot. And for those of you who don't know who I am, my name is Megan Thurston, and I'm the person to blame for this union. Nonetheless, I am honored to be standing here in front of all of you today as someone who, was, who has been with Matt and Jenna from the very beginning. Matt and Jenna asked me to be a part of today's wedding over two years ago. This wedding came as no surprise to me as I could have told you that they were getting married since their freshman year of college. I was excited at first to serve as the officiant, but then I quickly felt the pressure of what this role really meant. I did not want to say the wrong thing, offend anyone, tell lame jokes, or ultimately not fulfill Matt and Jenna's vision of their ceremony. In preparation for today's ceremony, Jenna sent me an agenda. She wrote out all of the sections, with exactly what I should say and when I should say it. However, for this particular section, she wrote, Megan's story, dot, 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 15 minutes. <laughs> I told her that no one wanted to listen to me talk for 15 minutes. Jenna replied, Meg, you have as much time as you need to tell our love story. I chuckled at Jenna's response. How was I supposed to sum up the last six years of this love story into 15 minutes? I went back and forth for weeks about what my story should entail until the memories and words came to me within the last few days. I called Jenna yesterday morning with a ton of questions. I still did not want to mess anything up. Jenna patiently said, Meg, we completely trust you. It's going to be great. So I prefaced this story time with these words, it's going to be great. And I also promise that my story will not last 15 minutes. <laughs> I thought it would be appropriate to begin when I first met these two. Matt and Jenna were starting their freshman year at Western Illinois University. They lived in Thompson Hall for their first year in college and they were privileged to have me as their hall director and hall government advisor. I remember the day I first met Jenna Decker. I was advising a group of 150 freshmen for a three-day leadership camp in the woods. She walked up to me confidently and with all of her bubbly energy said, I'm going to be the hall government president. I'm not exactly sure what my response uh, back to her was, but I did walk away secretly hoping that she'd win the election. I needed someone that was excited and confident to serve in this role. I also remember the first interaction I had with Matt Jessless. Matt, Jenna, and a few other students were playing cards at camp. I had walked over to say hello to the group as I was familiar with Jenna from our previous interaction about her election campaign. I checked in with everyone, asked them what game they were playing, and tried to learn their names. Matt sat there very quietly, but with the goofiest smile, while Jenna eagerly answered almost all of my questions. The only question Matt answered was when I asked him what his name was. <laughs> I watched these two for the three days while we were at camp. They were always together. We came back to campus and Jenna won the president election. And to my surprise, Matt ran for and won vice president election. <laughs> I met with Jenna weekly as the Hall government president to discuss program initiatives and to continue to develop her as a student leader. I got to know Jenna quickly through these weekly meetings. On the other hand, I was only able to observe Matt on a weekly basis in our Hall Government Executive Board meetings. After the first couple of meetings, I knew that Matt and Jenna were meant to be. Matt adored Jenna. He would intently listen to everything she said in meetings and support her every idea. And Jenna cared for Matt. She stuck up for him. I remember challenging Jenna in a one-on-one -on -one meeting in the fall semester about something she said concerning Matt. After much debate, per usual, I said to her, I'm confident that you will marry Matt Jessless. Jenna scoffed at the idea of marrying Matt Jessless in this particular moment. A lot more happened during their freshman year besides me predicting their fate as husband and wife. Matt and Jenna always trusted me. I said, go to an inner hall council meeting. You'll like it. I said, sign up for a week-long spring break service trip. You'll like it. 
I said, join the National Residence Hall Honorary. You'll like it. While Jenna may not have enjoyed all of these suggestions, both Matt and Jenna made a huge splash on the WIU campus as strong student leaders. I also remember the time that Matt was caught with alcohol in his room. I'm pretty sure that one of these groomsmen over here was also present for this. If I didn't, if I didn't know better, I would have thought Jenna would have been there too, since Matt and Jenna were always together freshman year. Oh wait, she was. She may not have been there when the police busted the room, but her bag was sitting on the floor in the middle of the room when I arrived to assist the police. Jenna will forever question whether or not she's in trouble when I invite her to go get coffee. I asked Jenna to get coffee a few days after the alcohol bust in Matt's room. She was so excited to be able to go off campus with me to get coffee for our one-on-one -on -one meeting that week. We had never gone off campus before. She was so excited. During our conversation at the coffee shop, though, I brought up the fact that I knew she was with Matt when he got caught that night. I talked to her about the responsibility of being a student leader and making better choices. This learning moment was extremely frustrating for Jenna as she just wanted to enjoy her freshman year of college. <laughs> Matt and Jenna were not always getting in trouble. However, they were not always receiving the same accolades either. Throughout freshman year, Matt and Jenna did everything together. Towards the middle of the second semester, Jenna's interest in Matt was piqued. She was willing to give him a chance at love. However, Matt and Jenna's relationship was rocked at the very end of freshman year when Matt was hired as an orientation leader and Jenna was not. This learning moment was also tough. No one likes rejection. <laughs> Matt and Jenna ended freshman year as friends. <laughs> you love it. Sophomore year brought some happy moments. I hired Jenna to serve as my student secretary that year. Both Matt and Jenna served on the Inner Hall Council Executive Board their sophomore year, so I was able to stay in touch with both of them through Jenna working in my office. This made me privy to the inside knowledge of their friendship. One day, I was sitting in my office, and Jenna came into work. She said, I think I like Matt. I tilted my head and said, are you sure? Are you ready this time? I did not want her to break, I did not want her to break his heart again. A couple days later, Jana, Jenna came into my office and told me all about their first kiss. I was intrigued. I was expecting a very romantic and suave move on Matt's part. Instead, Jenna proceeds to tell me that Matt kissed her goodnight in the hallway in front of the trash chute in a residence hall. How romantic. <laughs> Unfortunately, this love fizzled fast at the beginning of sophomore year. Jenna was very nervous to tell me that once again, they were no longer together. Even though they were not officially dating, Matt and Jenna were still close through their connection of working together in Inner Hall Council. Sophomore year was very exciting for Matt and Jenna. Jenna was elected in as the Illinois Residence Hall Association president, and Matt served on the leadership team for the Students Today Leaders Forever Spring Break service trip. It's <laughs> great. Matt and Jenna ended sophomore year as friends. That summer, Matt and Jenna stayed on campus to serve as summer assistants. A few weeks into the summer, Jenna came to me to tell me that she had opened up to Matt about being in love with him and that she was ready this time. However, Matt was not. <laughs> he needed to ensure that she really was ready this time before he would commit. In true fashion, Jenna was frustrated because she can be impatient sometimes. <laughs> She misunderstood, or no, she understood Matt's reasoning about why they needed to wait. Even though Matt made Jenna wait for the summer, I think we can all admit it was well worth it as Matt had been patiently waiting for Jenna to be ready since freshman year. I have watched as Matt and Jenna have become inseparable since that summer. Junior year began with love. With love came a lot of emotions. There were disagreements, frustrations, and lots of celebrations that year, but they stuck with it. At this time in my life, I had no real personal relationship advice I could give Matt and Jenna as they faced difficulties in their relationship, but I tried my best. Matt and Jenna ended junior year as boyfriend-girlfriend. <laughs> Senior year was tough for Matt and Jenna. I was no longer at WIU. They were no longer involved at Interhall Council. A lot of things had changed, but most importantly, their love and commitment for one another had not, which prompted the next step in their journey. 
I was fortunate to be able to witness their engagement that year. All of these changes matured our relationship into a wonderful friendship. Matt and Jenna graduated from college with the title fiance. A month later, Matt and Jenna exchanged vows and took the titles husband and wife. I've enjoyed being a part of this journey with them. Over the past six years, I've seen Matt and Jenna grow as individuals and as a couple. They have become some of my dearest friends and no longer just my former students. We have shared plenty of ups and downs, laughs, and tears since we met, but I would not trade it for anything. All right, now onto what we're really here for today. The renewal of Matt and Jenna's vows. When Matt and Jenna were married two years ago, they exchanged traditional vows. Today, in front of all the ones they love, they'd like to exchange their own vows to each other. Both Matt and Jenna shared their vows with me before today. These vows are reflective and speak to the true essence of both of them. Matt, a man of few words, and Jenna, a more vibrant and verbose writer. I have asked Jenna to share her vows first, as we all know that Jenna's ugly cry in response to Matt's vows will inhibit her from actually sharing her own vows after him. Jenna will now share her vows with Matt. Oh, yeah. Oh, I think you're supposed to talk. I don't know, but you can have a. Oh, that came off. Okay. <laughs> Not many people are given a second chance to recite their vows to the person they love. And I've thought a great deal about what I want to say to you this time around. I've thought about telling the story of when we first met and how you deliberately ignored me on the bus by putting in your headphones and turning your head as I tried to talk to you. <laughs> I thought about telling everyone about your new Netflix obsession, One Tree Hill. <laughs> I know, right? I even thought about telling everyone about the night in undergrad when you drank so much vodka in that barn you finally started to grow facial hair. <laughs> But I decided not to because I'm clearly the best wife in the world. <laughs> what I do want to tell everyone, and most importantly you, is all the things I'm grateful for about you. My parents raised me to believe I deserve the best, and these vows are my way of thanking you for being the man I do not deserve every single day. These are the things that I love about our life so far and the things I'm excited about in the future. These are the reasons why I love you. I want to say how grateful I am for the friendship you've given me since we met on our first day of college. This includes every day that you woke me up and walked me to my 8 a.m. English class, and every night that you got me home from house parties on Adams Street. It's for every Dairy Queen treat we ate on the steps of Sherman Hall and every date we had at Chicks on the Square. For every run we went on with our favorite Border Collies and all of the summers we spent in Macomb. For opening up and letting me see the incredible personality that made me fall in love with you and for always making my sorority sisters jealous for being the most incredible dance partner on every dance floor. <laughs> I'm grateful to your family for so many reasons, to your mother and father for raising you to be the kind, strong, and humble man that you are today. I'm grateful for the mutual love for Starbucks that your father and I share. <laughs> I'm grateful for your mom who, brought a, who bought a Christmas stocking and put my name on it during our freshman year of college because she had a feeling. <laughs> I'm grateful for your grandfathers, one for being a strong example of what it means to truly protect and serve in the line of duty, and the other for encouraging the importance of an education. And of course, your siblings for the sense of humor and arsenal of practical jokes they instilled in you. Your family molded you into the man of my dreams, and for that, I will forever be grateful. We're only through second paragraph, okay. I'm grateful for your never-ending patience with me and my constant loss of keys, phone, and wallet all at the same time. <laughs> for teaching me how to get out of speeding tickets and not getting angry when I'm unfairly given a parking ticket. I'm, gratefully, I'm grateful for your wit and the hilarious comebacks you can come up with on a whim, your moral compass that has brought me back from impulsive choices on more than one occasion, AKA the multiple dogs that we have found on the side of the road that you wouldn't let me bring home. <laughs> I'm always grateful that you never bat an eye when I go over budget on Starbucks and <laughs> a good retail therapy session with my friends. Thank you for loving me even when I ugly cry all over something stupid as cleaning the crock pot. <laughs> Thank you for always providing great music and car ride sing-alongs. Even when you mess up every single line to every single lyric, you do. <laughs> and for convincing me to work at Boy Scout camp for a summer and then supporting the idea of getting married there on a Wednesday night during the busiest week of the summer. I'm grateful for the moments that we shared in our first home together, from the cooking lessons to the door slamming fights, 
the church family we built around us and for praying with me when I didn't know what else to do, for fixing the toilet paper rolls, <laughs> cleaning the bathroom, folding the laundry, and hand washing the dishes even when I don't ask you to. I'm grateful that you accept my 24-7 job as part of our lifestyle and supporting me on days when I hate my dream job. Thank you for always stocking the fridge with avocados, barbecue chicken, and chocolate chip pancakes. <laughs> I know there are some things I will never be able to repay you for, and having to share a laundry room with 300 freshman girls is one of them. <laughs> I'm grateful for the sacrifices we made over the past year, for the time spent apart. Thank you for never asking me to choose between you and my education. <laughs> and always, oh, I lost my place. <laughs> and always pushing me to do better when I felt like I had nothing left to give. I can say. I can say that I'm grateful for Saturday morning budget meetings over FaceTime, but even more grateful that we don't have to do them anymore. Thank you for driving the four and a half hours, even if it was only for one night together. I just need to pause. <laughs> Being here and standing in front of you only proves how worth it every day's metaphor was. And there are no words for how happy I am that we made it here. Oh, okay. I'm grateful that you're my partner in crime, the Cory to my Topanga, and the Ross to my Rachel. Thank you for letting me change my last name at my own pace because of how much it means to be a Decker. For moving to the middle of Mississippi, of all places. <laughs> of all places. <laughs> and then supporting another move for my career two short years later. I'm grateful that you love warm weather, good barbecue, and college towns and dogs just as much as I do. <sighs> okay. And for refusing to settle for anything less than the life we were meant to live because I would truly go anywhere with you. I'm almost done, I promise. <laughs> Finally, I want to end by saying how much I appreciate you loving me for who I am and not who you want me to be. <laughs> be quiet. Thank you for understanding that I do not need you to fill the empty parts of me because you believe I can be complete all on my own. You're constantly telling me how amazing I am and I've realized that while I'm strong enough to light an entire city on my own, I need you to always remember that together we could set the entire world on fire. And that is why I love you. <laughs> Almost. Okay. <laughs> There's a quote that asks, <sighs> What if you woke up with only the things you thanked God for yesterday? And I know I can rest assured I would wake up each day with everything that ever mattered to me because I would wake up next to you. I love you. And you are truly the greatest thing that has ever happened to me. <sighs> I'm done. <laughs> Yeah. Jenna. <laughs> We've established this. It's good. <laughs> good job. So it's Jenna. Yeah. It's <laughs> <laughs> they say that getting married is one of the greatest days in your life. I consider myself blessed I get to get that day twice with you. I think it'd be fair to say that I'm a man of few words, but finding these words to describe my love for you came easy. Love is a beautiful thing. It makes people do crazy things, like get married at a Boy Scout camp or move across the country twice. <laughs> but that's how you know it's real. The days seem better and the sun shines brighter when I wake up next to you. You're the person I love waking up early with and hitting the road with sitting next to me. You're the person I love staying in <laughs> with cuddled up and watching TV. You're the first person I want to talk to after work and the person I want to share every funny joke with. You were the person I love. That's what I cried. I can't help but think it's fate that brought us together at college. From meeting you on our first night to sitting next to each other on the Camp Leatherneck bus, 
You were always the one, even if I didn't realize it at first. And I remember the first joke I told you laughed at. <laughs> I remember when I visited you at your house the first time sitting at the table with your family eating chicken pot pies, a nervous, <laughs> quiet boy. I remember the first time I told you I love you and when you said it back. I stand here before you today to say those words still hold true. You have and always will be my person. I love you. I love you. <laughs> oh, I hope they can do this. I can hope this holds. That's why you went first. Okay. As you can see, Matt and Jenna's perception of their bus ride to Camp Leatherneck that freshman year was drastically different. However, it is where their journey began and brought us here today. Throughout their college career, Jenna went back and forth, ignoring what Matt and I had seen since day one. It was not until junior year uh, that Matt and Jenna officially committed to one another. Since that summer, they valued what one another brings to their relationship. They complete one another. They are each other's true love. Matt and Jenna would now like to do a recommitment of promises to one another. They wrote these promises to each other for this very day during their junior year of college and have waited until now to say them to each other. These promises have been the foundation of their relationship since they were dating, throughout their engagement, and now are reminders to each other of what their marriage will continue to be. Best friend. <laughs> Do you want the mic? Okay. <laughs> we each told each other we'd be each other's best friends in case you missed that part. <laughs> okay. I promise to always make sure there is ice cream in the freezer. I promise I won't let you get in the wrong car in the parking lot. <laughs> so much. I know. I promise to sing along with you in the car. I promise to double check that I lock the door at night, even though when I know it's locked. I promise to kiss you every single morning and every single night. I promise to let you drive every now and then. <laughs> I promise to hear your side of the story, even when I know I'm right. I promise to always listen to you and hold you when you ugly cry. I promise to smile because I know it makes you smile. I promise to make you laugh every single day. I promise to challenge and motivate you every single day. I promise to challenge you to see things differently, even when you think you're right. I promise to keep the kid in you alive and never let you become boring. I promise to support you, encourage you, and give you a hard time, all at the same time. I promise to remind you every single day why you fell in love with me in the first place. I promise to always remember that this is a once in a lifetime love. And finally, I promise to always remember that this is a once in a lifetime love. Two years ago on this very day, Matt and Jenna tied the knot. And since they were married at a Boy Scout camp, they tied an actual knot. We have the knot here today, and they would like to tie the other ends of the knot to make both knots and pieces of rope into one. These promises and tying of the knot are unifying their marriage even more than they already have the past two years. go good job you ready for the fun part yes. okay as Jenna mentioned in her vows being a Decker means the world to her she has kept Decker as her last name for the first two years of their marriage recently she has formally changed her last name I want it to be noted that I'm the only person who can truly say that they announced them first as man and wife with Jenna's new name. Now that, Matt, 
and Jenna have recommitted, renewed, and retied the knot, I believe it is more than appropriate to announce them for the very first time as Mr. and Mrs. Jessless. Matt, you may now kiss your bride again. Kiss your bride again.